Okay, it's what I call story time now. It's just random hunting and shooting stories. There's no particular order, anything like that. This one concerns a rather interesting hunt I had. About October time, and I was up high seat with my daughter, and we got a big high seat called a scaffold. And it's on the intersection of three rides, so it's quite um, a fruitful, uh, a fruitful site in terms of deer. And on my, on my patch, I've got a lot of woodjack, a lot of roe, reds when they're in. So we've got a reasonable amount of deer to shoot. And it was one of those cold octobers. We've been up there since about I don't know three o'clock in the afternoon, and the wind was coming in. It was getting cold, and we had absolutely no traffic whatsoever. I was accompanied by my faithful. Grendel, which is based on a CZ uh, 527 chassis, but chambered in 6.5 Grendel, which is a little intermediate cartridge, and for the distances on this bit of my patch, 250 yards maximum, probably closer, woodland, it is a sweet little round. It really is a row, muntjac, and also good on foxes. Anyway, so I was up the seat, so we're getting cold, we're getting bored, and there's absolutely nothing happening. So I said to my daughter, look, just to keep the binos out. I'm going down the going down the ladder, and what I did, I unloaded the the rifle, put the mag in my pocket, and went down the ladder. And I was just about halfway down, and my daughter started pointing and looked, and down the right hand ride, 100 yards, was Roebuck, and he was staring at me, and I was trying not to stare at him. And I thought, oh God, all this time getting cold, seeing nothing, and I'm just about to sort of knock it in, and he's there. So I thought, well, what can I do? So I eased down the ladder thinking every second that he was just gonna walk or run. And he kept staring at me and I kept staring at him and I got to the ladder and I just sort of folded into the floor and he was still staring at me and I thought, this is ridiculous. Most deer would have gone by now. And I had to sort of crawl forward a um, couple of feet. And I thought, well, I'll give it a try. So I had the two problems of having to load the rifle and also put the bipod out because I was in a dip. When you try to be quiet, it's easy to be noisy. And laying on the floor, deploying the bipod and loading up the rifle sounded like the crack of doom. All the time I was keeping my eyes on the deer and I thought, it's gonna run, he hears those metallic clicks, it's gonna go, but it just stood there staring at me. So I was on the deck, put the rifle down and I was quite low because I was in a depression on the ground. So I then had to adjust the legs and the bipod, which took more time and a little bit noisier and the deer was still staring at me and I just couldn't believe it. Just couldn't. Probably took me five minutes by the time I'd sort of come down the ladder slowly, deployed, set myself in. And I just got everything I needed to do, legs at the right height, wound the scope down. So it was a, not a hard shot, it's about sorry, 160 yards, that sort of thing, as I said, quite an easy shot, but not from the front because I don't do headshots because they're always tricky. Deer can move in the fraction of the Takes the, you pull the trigger to the bullet to get to the target and I've seen too many people muck up headshots so headshots of me are really much out and then I thought I'll wait and it stood there staring at me and then it started to turn but it turned really quickly and then it faced me with its bums looking at me and I thought well I can't go for a, a Texas heart shot because the bullet will go straight through the whole body rip through the intestine, rip through the gut and it will ruin the carcass for anything useful and that's not the point i hunt for meat really so i had to wait my daughter's still up there with a set of binos on the deer looking and then stay still with this ass straight to me it started to feed with head down wandering towards the end of that ride and it wandered and it stopped and it ate and you know how they are they just stop for a bit anyway and for all that time i don't know how long it was I would say it was at least five minutes. It could have been longer, I don't know. Time seems to sort of telescope. And it was still arse on. And it just got to the stage where it was partially out of sight and it finally turned. It turned with its head to my right, presented me with a, with a quartering shot through the shoulder, which I took straight away, leapt up, ran about 10 yards and collapsed. And it was done just one of my not weird experiences but just I've never before had a situation where everything's taken so long and never had a deer stand like that in my whole life but it was interesting and good fun 
So I hope you enjoyed this little story. There'll be more to come. So it wasn't terribly exciting, but it was a true story about things that happen in deer shooting. And if you're a deer shooter, you probably can can relate to that. Okay, it's Pete Moore signing off. Support my channel. If you liked it, tell your friends. If you liked it, tell me. And if you want to speak to me about anything, it's the usual thing. pmore.shootingsports at gmo.com. And the channel is PCM Guns. So I hope to see you later with some more stories. Good and safe shooting.